Hey guys, I'm back. Um, thought I was done, but one observant YouTube uh, viewer pointed out that I forgot a step. So I did all the electronics and everything for Murph, and right before I went to Murph, I filmed all that, and then I realized I wanted to put a reset button on this thing. And I didn't go back and film putting in the reset button into this assembly. I want to make sure that you guys have everything you need. So I'm going to film this quick little video on how to put in that reset button. So let's go through what we're going to do. It's fairly simple, but here's what you need to be able to make that reset button and install it. You need your 3D printed part. I just uploaded this 3D printed part to hold the button to the Thingiverse file. I'll put a link down in the bottom. Uh, print that out. Have a, a momentary push button from Adafruit. I'll send a link to that. Momentary meaning you push it and it doesn't lock down. Right. You need solder. You need a soldering iron. Wire strippers, uh, not required, but I prefer it. If you get shrink tubing, it's always good for uh, reliability. And you need a 470 ohm resistor. And the color code that is yellow, purple, yellow, purple, brown. 470 ohms or thereabouts. All right, with the, that in mind, let's get down to how to put this button together. First thing you need to notice is there's four pins. Two pins are for the LED, two are for the switch. If you look at the bottom pins, one has a plus on the left and one has a minus. That is your LED, it is directional. It's very important we get the wires right on that. The top two pins are your switch. They can go in any orientation you want. So make sure you note which ones those are before we go any further. I recommend you have three different colored wires. Why? Because the switch wire, since it's non-directional, you can just use the same wire on both. Because the LED is directional, I like to have two different colors, preferably red for hot, black for ground, so that I don't get the wires backwards. So, first we're gonna wire up the switch. Go ahead and pull off some wire. You, know, you can always cut it shorter afterwards, but you can't add wire to it very easily. So give yourself a little extra slack. Cut two wires the same length. And then I'm gonna go strip the ends here, and in the previous videos, I showed you how to tin the wires. So what we're gonna do is let's, let's get all the wires together. You need two white wires. You're going to need one black wire, about the same length. And you're gonna need one red wire, about the same length. To save time, I'm gonna go strip all these. I'm gonna go tin the ends of them and I'll be right back. Uh, watch the other videos if you need any tips on tinning the ends of the wires. I don't think I need to repeat that. We'll get to that and we'll go to the next step. Okay, all of our wires are tinned. And what we need to do now is, what I find the easiest way to put these wires in is to pre-solder these joints here, shove the wires through and let it cool off. Uh, you don't need three hands that way to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat up each one of these connectors. I'm gonna add some solder into these holes. And then what I'm going to do is heat up, the, heat up this tab until the solder liquefies, shove the wire through, and then let it cool down. Let me solder the, the connectors first, and then we'll move on to the wires. I soldered all the tabs. So now what we're gonna do is remember the, so the contacts that don't have a plus and minus on it, which are the top ones in this orientation. You see the plus and minus there. Those are our switch lines. So take your two white wires and connect a wire to each one of these by pushing them through the hole and then letting the solder cool. Next, we're gonna cut some shrink tubing and put it over the white wires to put some strain relief into where the wires connect to the connector switches. Go on here. Slide that on. All the way up. And see so you can get it up and over. Gotta twist it a little bit. One important step, trim the tips of the wires that you soldered in, so they're flush. Now they're trimmed. Now you should be able to take the insulation and push it up and over. Same with the other one. 
it on the wire, slide it up. Slide it over like that. Take your soldering iron and just r run a big portion over the tubing on all sides until it shrinks very lightly. All right, there we go. So there's your switch wires complete. Next, we're going to do the LED, which is a little different. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to take your resistor and you need to connect it to either your red or black wire. It does not matter. So pick one, maybe shorten the wire a little bit and solder the two together. Okay, with the resistor plugged in, I'm going to take the black wire, connect it to the negative terminal. In this case, I need a little more solder, so I'm going to go in there and just solder the terminal and wire together. Test the joint. Okay, we're going to now add the same shrink tubing over the top. I may use a little bit bigger shrink tubing for the covering the resistor. So let's see, we need something about that long. Covering it there, trim it. Let's run the insulation up and over. And shrink tube it down. Okay, and shrink tube the black wire. Make sure you get it over the terminal if you can, like that. Shrink tube that down. and you've completed your wiring. Next, we're going to attach it to our block. First thing you need to do is remove the ring that comes with it. Take your block, and you may have to sand the inside of this depending on how your printer does, but take all your wires, slide them through the hole, out the back side, and slide your button into the hole like that. And on the back side here, take that ring that you took off, put them, put all the wires through, slide her up, and there should just be enough room in there. Yep. Like that. Now you've got your button. So I've already got one of these hooked up, so I'm going to pull up my actual demo unit and show you where to hook these wires. So let's go look at that. All right, here's our button. Now, remember, what, what are the white wires for? The white wires are for the switch, and the button is supposed to reset the board after you hit the button to restart the program over for the next user to program the eyeballs. So we want to hook to the reset pin. So if you look up here, I have a duplicate board here. Let's see, does this show it on it? Yeah, so this is the same feather screw shield. Top pin here is RST, which is reset. And if you look up the reset command on this board, if you pull that pin to ground, then it will reset the board and start over. So if you look in here, notice my white wire goes to the reset pin, to the switch, and then my white wire, because I ran out of ground pins, goes over here. Well, the white wire is one, two, three, fourth pin down. So if we look here, one, two, three, four is ground. So you want to connect reset to the switch and from the switch to a ground pin. Doesn't matter which ground pin, if you've got an open ground pin, pick that. Okay. Now the LED gets turned on and off by pin 12 in my code. And what you want to do is the positive side needs to go to pin 12. So the positive side should be the red wire. All right, so if we go over here, the red wire is right here. And they don't label all these, um, so you'll have to count down. So under USB, the pin under USB here is pin 13. This is USB, this is pin 13, this is pin 12. We wanna hook 
red positive two pin 12. That's gonna turn our LED on. The negative side of the switch, we made black, which is hard to see here because it's black, but if you could see it, it just goes down to this bottom left-hand corner, which is also ground. You can go to any ground you want. So now when I turn pin 12 high, it completes the circuit and turns your LED on. Once you have those all wired up, go ahead and get yourself some glue, glue your switch panel, glue that down to your board, and you've got yourself a switch. Some of you may be asking why I used a 470 ohm resistor. It seems kind of funny. Well, number one, it's one of the ones Adafruit sells. But there's an easy way to figure out what to use. If you go read the uh, Feather 32U4 research page on Adafruit, it says down on the pinout section page that any one pin, the max, the current max it can output is 20 milliamps. It recommends 10 milliamps. So we want to make sure we stay around here so we don't burn up the pin. So to figure that out, we use our age-old electronics equation, V equals IR, voltage equals current times resistance. The feather board is a 3.3 volt board, and we know that we want 10 milliamps-ish. What's the resistance? So, 3.3 divided by 0 0.01 equals R. R is 330 ohms. That's the ideal to get 10 milliamps. They don't sell a 330 ohm resistor, at least not from Adafruit. You can get them other places. Uh, but we don't want to go higher current than this, so we want to use a bigger resistor. So the next biggest resistor they sell is 470 ohms. So if we go 3.3 divided by 470 equals current, which equals 0 0.007 amps, which is equal to 7 milliamps. And if we look back, we said the recommended is 10 average, maximum is 20, so we're under that. So this resistor should be more than safe. It'll be a little dimmer for the LED, but you know that you're safe for the pin. That's why you pick a 470 ohm resistor. So you can go to Adafruit and pick that up, and this will work. That's how we get it. So there you go, guys. That's how you put in the switch for the animatronic eyeball setup. Sorry I forgot to tell you about it. It just slipped away from me. Hopefully it makes sense. It's pretty simple. That should complete the project. If you guys find anything else, I'll be glad to do another addendum video. But hopefully that covers about everything. Enjoy. Have fun. Ask questions. Stay curious. Enjoy the project, guys. See you next time.